Well, hello there. It's episode 98 of Family Life Morning. Some of the highlights of a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. We hope you'll smile. We hope you'll think. And if you haven't already, we hope you'll subscribe today so you don't miss a thing. Check out more of what we do at familylife.org. The most shocking thing is a man... Read the instructions. Yeah. <laughs> Fun conversation, good music, and something to think about. Family Life Mornings. Well, it's a record. It's a record that I don't want you guys to get any crazy ideas about trying to break, okay? Oh, I love records. Oh. Mm-hmm. This is the record for the loudest thing ever shouted. Wow. The oh, loudest gosh. shout <clears throat> ever. <clears throat> it belongs to a teacher in Ireland. <clears throat> She shouted at over 121 decibels. That's like the the volume of a chainsaw. All right. She (laughs) shouted. And she shouted. (laughs) She shouted just one word. What's that? Pretty sure that all the kids in the class heard. What's that? The loudest shout ever. Quiet. (laughs) Oh, that's ironic, isn't it? How about that? Oh, you know what's funny about loud shouts? Mm. They get your attention. Yeah. So do soft things, too. Why, hello there. It's time to get up. I feel like the decibel on that was just yeah. a little too loud. Yeah. yeah. Quiet. <laughs> I agree. Shh. Randy, keep it down, will you? He renews us every day. And oh, man, are we glad. Family Life Mornings. A man purchased a kerosene heater, you know, one of those portable things you mm-hmm. can oh, move yeah. from room Space to heater. room. Yeah, and uh, he got out the heater and then got out the instructions, and he read through the instructions and then he read through the instructions again. Hmm. And then a third time, he read through the instructions because he was pretty sure there was a typo in the instructions. But just to be safe, he followed the directions to the letter. And after doing exactly what he was instructed to do, he turned on the heater and it worked. Several people commented on his post saying, you know what, that's why my heater didn't work. Because I didn't do it the way you did. The instructions probably meant to read, the room must be insulated. But what it said was, the room must be insulted. (laughs) You're an awful looking room. Terrible room. So right before turning on that heater, he said, this is the worst room I have ever seen. You call yourself a room. The most shocking thing is a man read the instructions. Yeah. Oh. If you stick around long enough, this will all start to make sense. It's Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy. Hey, you guys, uh, Brandon, you were over there. You got a chance to, to have a little quiz here, see who's oh, fastest with the yeah. answer. Okay. I love these. Uh, I, right. lo- I always love these quizzes because I have the answer. So it's really <laughs> Oh, so it's a battle between me and Randy and Brandon. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll do it in the oh, form boy. of a very popular game show. It has to be, you know, okay. you remember this one. Now, the answer has to be in the form of a question. Okay. Ah. Okay. Here we go. Mm. Okay. The category is mm-hmm. famous newsmen. Here's your clue. Born on May 11th. Hey, that's today. Um, and tries very hard to work on Kent Reed's investigative skills. Still working. In the form of a question. I don't know who this could be. Wow. I'm racking my brain here. It's too early to think about Do you have any uh, any guesses in the form of a question, Brandon? Uh, Mm -hmm. Who is myself? (laughs) 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 Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Brandon. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I just want to hear Therese keep singing. (laughs) Oh, it's terrible. I get it. I get it. I enjoy it. No. (laughs) Enjoy your birthday. (laughs) Thank you. We love you, man. We're part of your complete breakfast, Family Life Mornings. Not sure if you guys had thought about this, but uh, a few years ago when they stopped having the circuses for the most part, it's like, what happened to all those elephants? I mean, Mm -hmm. it was like elephants. And now they're arriving at a sanctuary, so the elephants are going to be well taken care of and that kind of thing, which always makes me think of, and I've never understood these, uh, because circus and then elephants with peanut, the circus Mm -hmm. peanut candy uh, that nobody on the entire face of the earth uh, has ever eaten. Well, I just want to let you know that my mom basically ate them every single day. She's the one. And when she was buried, she was buried with a bag of circus peanuts. Is that right? Aww. True story? Yeah. Aww. Yep. Oh, <laughs> well, I hope that brought up a good memory then. It did. It did. I was actually having a really bad day, 
and I turned the radio on, and you guys were talking about the circus peanuts, and I said, okay, Mom, thanks. Oh, <laughs> oh she's just giving right. you a hug through the radio. Yep. She was. See how, so God, thank you so see how God uses everything seriously. He, uses he does. Everything. He yeah. absolutely does. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to Family Life Mornings. We're giving away free smiles, and we've got one that's just your size. How long have you been married? Now, you don't have to give us the actual number of days, but... almost been, Yeah, well, it's been almost 10 months. Okay, yeah, yeah right. So the communication thing that we just talked about, have you and Kristen found that? It's like she will say something like, we just gave the example, hey, the trash is full. And she maybe have meant, could you take the trash out? Uh, right. She'll say one thing and not... Have you had this discussion yet? Yeah, we have... Uh, so dishes are one of those oh, ones. Oh, dishes, okay. And uh, one of the things she'll say is that, I think the sink is starting to stink a little bit, and <laughs> right. that means the dishes are kind of piling up, or maybe needs to need to be washed. Yeah. Right. See, now maybe I'm maybe I'm an anomaly, but if I can sometimes say things like, "Oh, I have a lot to do with this," and I'm not saying that I want help, uh-huh. and Scott, in his good natured desire to want to help me, will swoop in and like do a bunch of stuff that I didn't necessarily want help with. And so, you know, one of the things I learned in the healing journey was about asking for the things that you need, you know, being able to say, boy, I'm feeling really overwhelmed with this. Would you be able to help me with this? Or I really don't want to do dishes tonight. Would you be able to do that? You know, or could you take Mm -hmm. out the garbage or, and so I don't know, I feel like that just removes a lot of the guessing what your spouse wants. If you just ask for what you need. Randy, you've Mm -hmm. been married longer than the rest of us. What do you say? old wise one. Well, you know what? (laughs) I think it really helps to know your wife's or your husband's love language and what that is. Mm -hmm. Because my wife, I can do nothing better for her than to do good works around the house. Acts she of service, right? She loves it when yes. I do stuff like that. So, Therese, to use your illustration, if she were to say, oh, I've got a lot to do today, mm-hmm. I know I need to jump in and figure out, I, I, and it, it's even better if I don't ask her, what do you need me to do? Right. But if I figure huh. out, oh, she could really use this in this area, and then I go do it. Oh, oh, big points. Big yeah, points. and that's that's a big, good point, because her love language is acts of service. See, my love language is words of affirmation, so I don't want my husband to help. I just want him to stand there and go, <laughs> babe, you're doing a great job taking out the garbage. Brandon, I hope you were taking notes. Oh, I am. Yes. Yes. Right. Yep. <laughs> taking us home with me. A little serious, a little silly, a perfect balance to start your day. Family Life Mornings. The last time all living humans were on Earth together was November 2nd, 2000. When I first read that, I was like, what? what? Exactly. Exactly what I thought. I'm like, what? (laughs) I'll read that again. The last time all living humans were on Earth together was November 2nd, 2000. Here comes the follow-up sentence. The International Space Station has been continuously (laughs) occupied ever since. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Just an amazing fact. Oh, but wow. God, it is. But uh, God is everywhere, and God hears you no matter where hmm. you are. And I know Kevin Williams was talking about looking up at uh, all the different planets. So, yes, and yeah. so many are going to be visible yeah. in the next few nights that we normally don't get to see. And so, yeah. great reminder, you know, <laughs> let's... Uh, Remember the people who aren't on Earth. Right. I mean, that's just an amazing uh, fact. It's so weird. God is good everywhere. It's Thrifty Thursday on Family Life. When you're clothes shopping, check the tags. You'll see the type of fabric and, of course, the size, but what you're really looking for is the washing instructions. Look for items that you can clean at home easy. Like, I have to really like something if that tag says dry clean only because you factor in the cost of about $5 every time that item needs to be cleaned. If you're going to wear it a few times a year, it might be okay, but any more than that, and, well, you're probably better off buying something that's a little more expensive and easier to care for. Helping you do more with what God has given you. Thrifty Thursday on Family Life. Sometimes there's bills. Sometimes there's birthday cards. Sometimes there's dryer sheets. You just never know what you're going to get when you open your mailbox. This time of year, some mail carriers have started putting dryer sheets, like fabric softener sheets, in mailboxes. And the reason is is that it repels insects. Oh. And insects are on the move looking for a place to make a home, and a mailbox seems like a pretty safe place. And the last thing you want to do as mail carrier is, like, stick your hand into something where there's, you know, a wasp yeah. nest or something like that. And so if there's a dryer sheet put in your mailbox, 
Don't throw it away. Leave it there. It's there for a reason. And the other bonus is that now all of your bills are going to be fluffy and static free. <laughs> oh, so, oh, I love it go. when my yes. bills are like that. <laughs> April fresh. Is the sun breaking through yet? He is the dawn. You're getting your day started with Family Life Mornings. Don't sweep that up and put it in the trash. Are you kidding me? Sawdust is now being used to make new wood. They do Mm. kind of like a 3D printer sort of thing. The sawdust is mixed with this binding agent, and then new things can be printed. There's some really creative people who have printed, like, some figurines, some vases, some bowls. But... I think with the cost of lumber, it can't be that hard to, like, print a two-by-four, right? Hmm. We get, like, ten of those, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, that can set you back pretty far. You can also use sawdust to make clay. Oh, one cup of flour, two cups of sawdust, and three cups of water. Huh. And then you can just sculpt it into whatever, huh? Let it dry for two days, and then you can paint it. Where do you teach at? Christian Heights Camp in Little Valley. That's yeah, cool. so you guys are having camp this summer? No, unfortunately, oh. we didn't have it last summer either. Oh, I'm so that's sorry. Bad. That's going to be a bummer for you. All right. Well, hopefully next kids. year. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. all going to come back and you're going to be like, you were little when I saw you last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello there, sunshine. Welcome to Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy. 